Welcome back to Pursue the Hunt. I'm your host, Mike Friesen, and this week we're chasing bull moose in August for our any bull season up here in Northern British Columbia, Canada. We're really excited about this episode, so we hope you are too. But before we get to that, we're gonna take you back to last year and do a little recap. Enjoy. eight or nine years Jeremy and I have been successful I think every year but one year between the opening day and the second day after opening for moose so if I was a betting man I'd say today we have pretty good odds but we'll see the trail cams have been telling a different story this year, so. What else does 2020 have in store for us? coin flip. Jeremy, you have the call. Wow. Okay. 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 Heads. heads. Tails it is. That's heads. Is it elk head? Is it, is it <laughs> the caribou head right on that? <laughs> I guess I get for a shot. Get in here, Jeremy. All right, so we've got 
pursue the hunt tagged out here on a beauty bull moose. A nice immature spike fork here. And uh, yeah, our original intention was coming in here for elk this evening. And uh, we seen a cow and a calf elk. And then we come up on these two bulls and they were fighting for an hour, it felt like, till he finally separated enough to give us a shot. So we got a ways to pack out, so we got to get to work. But uh, thanks, Jer. Okay. All right, let's get to work and cape them out. We are loaded and about to do the impossible. We are gonna try to pack a bull moose. Small bull moose, but a bull moose nonetheless. Out. It's probably more weight than I am. Oh, probably. Oh, well, we made it to the top. We have one more hind quarter to go get, but it's not all the way down. Good way to cap it off, hey, Jar? You betcha. Okay. Makeshift tripod. Dash cam. Day two, number two. Of like 90. <laughs> Next three months. It's foggy this morning, which. Predicted. Jeremy predicted. Humidity's like, what, 81 or 82%, they said. But we've seen a cow calf moose already this morning, so that's a good sign. Uh, going, going back to old style. A little bit of park and wait. Find some glassing areas. So try to seal the deal. It's a beautiful morning, though. Very picturesque.
we've uh, we've got uh, halfway to go here in our any bowl season in BC and we've been we've been pushing pretty hard pushing the mornings especially because it's cooler and uh, seeing a bunch of cows and calves which is great a couple of sets of twins so a population looks actually pretty good in, a, in the area that we're in um, yeah, we know of a couple bulls that were taken early so they're definitely aware of what time of year it is so yeah I think it's just time to to lock it down hopefully hopefully this morning Jeremy can punch a tag and and complete the complete the season here for any bull if not then it moves to some restrictions here in BC where uh, we have three on the brow ten on one side or a spike fork on one side so yeah hopefully to close the deal it's a beautiful morning this morning no, almost no wind though so it could be could be a difficult stalk this morning but hey all we need is an opportunity Yeah. Bull moose. Bull moose down. Bull moose down. Yeah, buddy. Little legs on him. But he'll eat. Oh, he'll eat. Alrighty, so we spotted this bull, what, maybe three, four kilometers off the road on the back side of this uh, pea field here. So we went for a good little walk and come up around the back side of the swamp and located him and put a couple good shots on him and and uh, yeah nice five by five bull um, it's probably three four years old 
and he's gonna eat good. Now the work starts. Today's the 26th of August. Come on, JD. All right, so we're about to uh, dig into this moose here, and I just wanted to put a disclaimer in that before you head out, if you're hunting on private property, make sure you talk to the farmer and all, get permission, obviously, but then also have an exit strategy for the animal. Um, so today we had to call the farmer, let them know where that we had taken a moose, where it was, how we we're planning to get it off the field to do as little or no crop damage as possible. So just make sure if you're hunting private property, stay in communication with the farmer and you'll probably be able to hunt on that land for years to come. Well, that wraps up this episode here uh, with the moose. And just what a great ending, just tagging out on one of the bigger bodied bull moose that we've taken, you know, between Jeremy and myself. And there was definitely a few things that we took away from this particular hunt this year. And the first one was the bulls seemed to be in a bit short supply. We didn't have a lot of bulls on camera again this year. Uh, there were some bulls that were taken first day uh, close to our area so they kind of knew what was going on so hunting the cows definitely paid off for us this year because as we watched the cows the bulls came around you know checking up on his herd kind of thing and and I think that's what uh, that's what allowed us the opportunity is just hunting the cows because they were quite a few cows in the area this year so that definitely helped us out a lot the second thing is where we had spotted the bull from or the group of moose, I should say, originally, was from quite far off, definitely probably two, just over two miles. And they were moving, they were in a bit of a, a gully, so it was hard to pick out if there was a bull or not. And so as we made our way around, it was just really important when we crest that hill to just go slow, go quiet, peek over, because as soon as you silhouette yourself on a skyline, they'll pick you out. So it's really important as you're hunting, just peek over the crest make sure that there's nothing just over. So thanks again for watching this episode on Pursue the Hunt. I'm your host, Mike Friesen, and you're watching it on Sportsman Channel Canada.